folks, welcome back to this Dow Jones or US 30 price action case study. We're going to be going over a certain trade that you could have taken on the week and we're going to be dissecting it from the higher time frames down to the entry time frame, which in this case will be the 15 minute time frame just to keep things simple, right? So here we have the four hour time frame of the Dow Jones and we're going to begin with marking out our market structure. So for those who've been following the channel, you understand that the first thing we look at is our market structure. So what we had over here is we had price giving a structural high. Just over here to the bottom left of your screen, we have a structural high over here. Then we saw price giving a minor retracement over here, right? So from here, we've had the break of structure to the upside, right? So I'm going to avoid a lot of the minor structure over here. We're going to be considering the major swing structural points over here in line with the daily time frame. So what do I mean by that? We have a structural low up here. We had a structural high. Then we saw a very deep retracement down into a structural low, you know, giving us a discounted low in April's retracement. And again, what we've had over here is we've essentially filled an inefficiency or a fair value gap over here, right? So this is how I'm currently looking at the Dow Jones. If we're currently bullish, we understand we're respecting bullish order flow and we're respecting the overall higher time frame trend, right? So if we label this as an inefficiency, this here is a fair value gap or an inefficiency in price. So if we get that label. And here we have a fair value gap, right? We have a fair value gap and we have a discounted POI. Okay, so this is a discounted POI. So let's label that just like this, right? So we understand that a discounted POI will occur when there's a fair value gap, when there's a break of structure, and when price is in the discount, essentially. And here's where we see that discount. So we see a retracement of this order block over here. Notice how the wicks come into it, filling the imbalance. And since then, we've headed higher. So we have a bullish break of structure to the upside. Okay, so now we're looking at the most recent price action. Okay, so we have another break of structure to the upside. So now once we've identified our structure, the next thing we look for is our dealing range. So our dealing range consists of this swing low, the most recent swing low, up to the most recent swing high over here. So this is our dealing range. This is what we refer to as the dealing range. The dealing range itself is very important because it gives us the it gives us the insights to analyze the next two things in the market. Right? Okay, so we have a discounted low or we have a low over here and we have a premium high over here, right? Highs and low down here. So now anything above that, anything above this 50% level becomes a premium, anything below becomes a discount. And we do the same thing as we did over here. We identify a four hour PY, okay? So the four hour PY that price has reacted off is this over here. So what we have over here is we have a four hour POI over here. This engulfing candle gives us our four hour POI. Okay, so people often ask me, what is it that validates a point of interest? How do you as a trader validate your point of interest? Okay, very good question. So let's quickly label this as a four hour point of interest, right? H4 POI or four hour POI. What are the things that actually validate a four hour POI from a smart money concept from a smart money perspective, right? The three things that validate a POI that you need in your notepads are the following. It must break structure. That's the first rule, right? It must break something. POIs are strong and they're valid when they break something. We've seen the last structural high over here get broken with the boss over here, and that confirms the first rule. We must have a break of structure in price. That is the first thing. So let's quickly label that over here break of structure. Now, the second thing we're looking for as traders is that we want to, we want the POI itself to leave an inefficiency or a fair value gap. In this case, we see a fair value gap just over here. Okay, so that's going to, I'm going to label that in blue. This fair value gap over here is an inefficiency in price. So when price does come down into this region, it looks to rebalance. So this is a rebalancing act and only fair value gaps can actually be rebalanced. So this is a buy side imbalance or buy side inefficiency. Therefore, it is one of the other confluences we need for a POI. The third rule of a POI is the fact that we use the Fibonacci tool to project from the dealing range low to the dealing range high. Okay, so once we identify that, we understand that anything below the 50% level is a discount. So when we're looking at bullish POIs, this is a bullish POI in this case, we understand that bullish POIs must be in the discount. Okay, so these are the three rules to identifying a point of interest from a smart money concept from a smart money perspective, sorry. We want to see a break of structure, we want to see a fair value gap, and we want to be priced in the discount, okay? So with all three rules met, this is the reason why we've seen a reaction, a bullish reaction off this zone over here. And this is the move we're going to be dissecting on the 50 minute chart. The 50 minute chart will give us what we're looking for in terms of an entry model, okay? So if we quickly go down to the 50 minute time frame now, we can begin to dissect 
market structure again. So what we saw over here, right, the way that I look at the markets over here is we saw a market structure shift over here. So we had a small correction over here before giving us a pullback. So this is our shift of market structure. Notice how we mitigated the four hour POI and then broke it higher. This is important to understand. OK, so from here we have the same thing again, right? We have the same thing again where price has given us a swing low down here and a swing high up here. So this is our structural dealing range, just like this. So what is the thing to notice from here, right? This is a bit of a you know, more advanced premium and discount array concepts. But what are the things that you can notice from this particular price action trade, right? We've come into a discount over here. So this is now a discounted low. So what we have over here is we have a structural low down here. Let's change the color to blue. So the blue dots represent 15 minute structure. So what we have over here is we have a structural low over here and we have a structural high over here. So we have a structural low, structural high. Price has given us a discounted low just over here. So price has given us a discount and is then headed higher. So from here, you want to ask yourself, where are the strong structures and where are the weak structures? Well, from here, we understand that this is a weak structural high just over here. So this point here is weak. This is a weak structural high and it's the M15 DOL, M15 drawn liquidity. And you want to ask yourself, well, what do I mean by a drawn liquidity and why is this an M15 structural weak high? And the reason why it's a weak high is quite simple. The low is down here. And price only came down to this region over here. So this move down here did not create a new high, right? This is a discounted low. And this high over here is weak. This is a weak structural high. And again, just to repeat, the reason why it's weak is because we haven't seen it broken the previous low down here, right? The dealing range is coming to a discount before heading higher, okay? So this is our weak structural high over here. So now when we dissect price on the 15 minute time frame. Again, what we see over here is we see a very clear AMD model going in line with the overall trend, right? So understand we've reacted off a H4 POI. So let's quickly label what we've had so far, right? We've reacted off a four hour POI and the four hour trumps the 15 minutes. So we reacted off a four hour POI. We're in a four hour discount. And on the 50 minute time frame, we have a weak structure above, right? Weak structure above to target. So with these things in mind, this gives us a, an alignment for bullishness and bullish structure overall. And here's how we can dissect that, right? So we have an Asian range high. We have, sorry, we have an Asian range over here, right? The Asian range gives two specific regions. We have an Asian range low over here, down here. This is our Asian range low. And this is our Asian range high, just over here. So as we come into the London session, what we see is we see price tear down over here, giving us the low of the day. Notice how we've refilled some imbalance to the left. We've refilled the majority of the imbalance to the left. And the London session gives us that low of the day. This is what we refer to as the ICT Judas swing, right? And how can we confirm an ICT Judas swing? This is important to understand. What is it about a Judas swing that confirms it? Well, we don't know it's a Judas swing really until we see a shift of market structure in the New York session, right? So the shift of market structure in this case, for me, would be just over here. We've seen a one candle pullback on the 50 minute time frame before seeing our shift of market structure. So let's label that shift of market structure. Now that we see a shift of market structure, what we're essentially looking for is we're looking for price to give us a fair value gap in session. And this is what we refer to as a time-based fair value gap. Okay, so what we see, if we see a fair value gap that gets produced at 2.30 or 1430 UK time. So this corresponds to the market open, right? So this is 930 Eastern Standard Time, right? 930 Eastern Standard Time. This is the market open for indices, right? So that's the S&P 500. That's the NASDAQ. That's the US 30, right? This is the market open for this particular market, right? This particular time of 930 Eastern is when we're looking 930 to 1130. The first two hours is when we're looking for an AM session fair value. Yeah, this is the AM New York session, right? So this Judas swing over here from London is validated after we see a break of structure. That's very important to understand. I often get a lot of questions asking me, how do we validate the Judas swing? What makes a Judas swing? Well, we need to see a break of structure, right? That's the first thing, a break of structure in session. So we're pairing time with price. Now that we've done that, the next thing we want to look for is we want to look for our most recent dealing range to trade off, right? So our dealing range right, consists of this swing low, which often will, correlate, will, will often align with the low of the day or the Judas swing. This is the low of the day, or this is the low of the day, sorry, or the low of the dealing range, and this is the high of the dealing range. So now that we have the high and the low of the dealing range, from here we project the Fibonacci tool from the swing low down here up to the swing high, right? So we see we project the Fibonacci from the swing low 
up to the swing high like this. This is very important to understand. We see a swing, we see a swing low and a swing high like this. And once we've established that, what we're essentially looking to do is you want to key off a fair value gap whilst keying off at least into a premium as well. Very important to understand. We've keyed off a, once we've keyed off a fair value gap in the discount. From here, it becomes quite easy to understand, right? So from here, we have price again, safe, safe stop loss below the Asian range low. Sorry, not the Asian range low, the wick, the 930 wick over here. And once we've established that, the week high itself becomes the next overall target, right? For a 1 to 2.7 or 1 to 3 hour trade, right? We're currently running. But this is essentially a brief overview as to how you can trade the accumulation, manipulation, and distribution using the US, you know, on the US 30, in this case, from a higher time frame perspective down to a lower time frame perspective, right? So if you like this video, give it a like and thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one.